Another idea that can potentially stretch across different topics within the computing curriculum is that of true and false or, or truthiness, but particularly uh, we're going to have a look at uh, different uses of true and false in programming. Um, so students will probably be familiar with the idea of uh, truth values. So when I introduce Boolean logic in Key Stage 3, I talk about truth values, things that can be either true or false. This slide has a blue background. Um, this slide has a title um, pie chart. And, you know, everybody would agree on whether they were true or false. They're kind of objective um, things. And in computing, we usually talk about mathematical truths or um, sometimes electrical things, you know, whether there's a switch on or off. So um, different opposites, um, basically. And if you've watched the combinations video, we'll you think about opposites in terms of binary and bits as well. Um, so we can talk about mathematical truths in our programming. So uh, we, we're looking for a particular value. Is x equal to 5, for example? We can make it equal to 5. Um, and we also looked at Boolean variables. So you can set a particular variable, and variables have types. You know, um, in Python, we've got float, we've got strings, we've got integers, and we've got Boolean. So uh, this is assuming a little bit of knowledge to begin with. So when we, in our programming, uh, when we do a comparison, we get a result of true or false, don't we? So if we just have a quick look at that sort of things that we can do. Uh, so we've got an example up here. So if we say, um, is x equal to 10? Is x greater than 10? Is x greater than 0? Is x not equal to zero so these, this is python notation um you in obviously if you're using something like visual basic you'd have a different notation for um not equal to so if we have a look uh, in um python so I, I can use the console for this and just as an aside this is why i think that um having an online ide with the console is so um essential although lots of um lots of providers actually turn that off for some reason. So if I say x equals 10, I can do my comparisons here. I can say is x equal to 10? And I get a true. Um, is x greater than 10? No, it's not. Is x greater than 0? Is x uh, not equal to 5? Yes, it is not equal to 5 because it's 10. Is it not equal to 10? Um, no, it's not not equal to 10. Um, so we've got all those comparisons, and they all generate a, a, an answer of true or false. And we can even do things like this. We can say, is true uh, equal to true? And it is. Uh, is true uh, equal to false? No, it's not. Uh, is false equal to false? Yes, it is. Um, so we can do all those sorts of comparisons, just as we can do um, with numbers. And actually, when we evaluate things, um, that's the bit that's done first. So in maths, we talk about bid mass, uh, which is the kind of school-friendly way of talking about operator precedence. But certain things get done first uh, when we're programming as well. And um, it's important to appreciate that. So these comparisons tend to be evaluated first if you use them with things like if or with while. Um, so we talked about Python operators. There are some that um, that we don't talk about, that, or, or that aren't in the they're not in the GCSE, but I introduced them even at Key Stage Three because I think they're quite useful. So things like uh, exclusive or it's probably in any programming language in, in programming it's probably one of the more um, one of the more useful ones. Um, so we can use literal values when we're using those Boolean operators. So we can say not false. In fact, I didn't do not, did I? But um, let's just have a quick look. So we can say not uh, false will be true, and not true will be false. And you can link that into your lesson on uh, Boolean logic. So uh, not so zero and one. This is a, this is an ordinary switch. This is one thing that um, sometimes you don't appreciate to begin with. So you get uh, so this is a standard. I think I got this from an electronics catalog. A standard power switch, and some switches, if you have a look, do have a zero and one on there. So that's that link between kind of true and false, on and off, zero and one. Um, the other kind of power uh, switch symbol you, you might have on your monitor if you're sitting in front of a computer now is the one with the. I've, I've only relatively recently realize that it's actually a zero with a one inside it isn't it so actually sometimes they might be combined so not off it is on um, and not on is off and we look at how to combine those with things like and so when we're using and they both have to be on so the left one has to be on and the, the right one has to be on 
uh, before um, before that works. And actually, if you want to, if you want to show the students this, students find this quite helpful. It's in the math section uh, of the website uh, Boolean Logic. So. Um, so and then we, we looked at expressions as well. So uh, we can combine things. So is um, five is greater than zero and five is less than 10? Well, you wouldn't bother doing that, would you? You wouldn't bother using literal numbers um, because five is greater than zero, that's true, and five is less than 10, that's true. So the whole thing, you might as well just replace that with true. And uh, that's probably getting into that A-level simplification of Boolean expressions idea, but um, you can see how that would work. So you probably do that with a variable. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? So uh, x equals true, not x. So in this case, um, that, that numerical one, you could do something like this. You could say um, x equals 5. Individually, is x greater than 0? Yes, it is. Is x less than 10? Yes, it is. Is x greater than 0? Is x greater than 0? And uh, is it less than 10? And some students don't. I realize you have to repeat the variable name as there as well uh, to begin with so that might be a, an opportunity to avoid a misconception there um, so obviously that's true five is both greater than zero and less than ten so um, these are known as boolean expressions um, and so if you use if and while so if you have something like if x is less than ten or you have while x is less than zero or whatever um, the Expression here um, is evaluated first. So all ifs and whiles are really just if true or false. And another kind of beginner idea um, is they, they do things like this. So stop equals false. If stop equals true, then print stopping. Okay, so that's a common kind of beginner student program perhaps. Um, but actually, stop equals true will be evaluated first. So in that case, is stop equal to true? Well, no, it's not. So that if is just if false. So that's an unnecessary uh, line in that program. And you could just say if stop, and that would do it. The uh, equals true isn't necessary. So you could link into that idea to kind of tidying up your programming, making your programming is uh, concise. Another interesting idea, something, so we're familiar with this idea. So if you have A equals one, yep, that's okay. B equals two, um, and then C equals A equals B. So what's that gonna do? It looks a bit odd, doesn't it? But um, let's see what that does. So A equals one, B equals two, C equals A equals B. Now in Python, because you've got the 1 and 2 uh, equals things, as you have in C uh, style languages, but not in Visual Basic, that's a bit of a clue to what's going on there, isn't it? So what's the value of C going to be? Well, first of all, what's the type of C? So C is a Boolean, okay? and if we look at the value of C, it's false. So why is that? So what it's doing here is A is 1, B is 2, so it's evaluating this part first, is a equal to b? No, it's not. It's false. And it's so it evaluates that to false and then it's, it's assigning the false to c. So it looks a bit odd, but what it's doing, because that's a comparison and that's an assignment, um, it's doing two different things. So that's a, an interesting uh, idea that sometimes um, students kind of aren't aware that you can do. So it looks a bit strange, but it makes sense when you kind of think about it. And it, I think it helps kind of get across the idea that those kind of expressions are always evaluated first before assignment or uh, anything else is done, uh, the selection also. So um, what about this? So th this is another useful thing. Um, it's not theoretically useful and it's, um, it's, you know, it's not going to be in the exam. And it does vary a little bit from language to language. Um, but if you're doing Python, then you can do this. And it is there are some common features with other languages as well. So um, this also sometimes surprises students. So if you say uh, 0 equals false, um, and what you get is true, because actually it's that idea that uh, true and false are the same as 0 and 1. So again, that links in with your lessons on Boolean logic, my page 
uh, with the switches. So 0 and 1 are the same as on and off, the same as true and false. Uh, and again, 1 is equal is the same as false. Some programming language, Visual Basic, uh, false, uh, sorry, true is, um, I meant what, 1 is true there, didn't I? Uh, true is minus 1. Um, but you can just um, use um, you know absolute values if you wanted to do that comparison. And it goes further than that as well, because you can do things like this. You can say 5 times false. And because false is 0, then um, what you get is 0. Or if you say 5 times true, um, because true is 1, you get 5. So that's an interesting thing. What you can do here, you might be aware um, in Python you can multiply strings, which is a little bit unusual. So you can say things like a times 3, and you get 3 a's. So one way to deal with the, the plural thing is this. So we've got a program on the right-hand side. This might be something you do very early on in your programming um, lessons, so like 10 green bottles. So when you, if you just uh, do this sort of thing, so we're printing the number, we're using range to count down from 10, and then we're printing the number and the word green bottles, you get this here, don't you? So, um, so one green bottles, which isn't quite right. And what, what some people do is they do this, don't they? So... Um, and which it kind of makes it look like you thought about it, but kind of in a half-hearted way. Um, so what you could do is this. You could say bottle plus, um, we could say uh, S. And how many S's do we want? Well, we could multiply it by that Boolean value. I'm just going to put it in brackets here to make it look a little bit clearer. So I'm going to say uh, N, not, um, N is not equal to uh, 1. And let's just see if that works. So that does work. So it's saying 10 green bottles, 9 green bottles, blah, 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 1 green bottle, no green bottles. Why does that work? Well, when you get to, so when n is 10, n is not equal to 1 is true. True is the same as 1, so we get 1s. When we get down to 1, 1 is not equal to 1. Well, that's false. False is the same as zero, so we get no S's. So we can use true and false in that way as well. Um, in the slides, I've done it in a slightly different way. Um, so we've, um, well, there's a, a detour via representation, so we'll come back to that in a minute. So, so I've linked this in to the idea um, of the representation inside the computer. So why are true and false the same as zero and one? Well, because you can represent them in one bit. So everything inside the computer is represented as a number. Uh, numbers are stored as binary, so it gives you an opportunity to kind of take a little detour via representation. Binary uses noughts and ones. Noughts and ones are stored using bits. Properties of the hardware are used to store the noughts and ones. So different properties of the magnetic media or circuits being on or off or switches being on or off, etc. So bits can be used to store true or false. So the behaviour of true or false, this is when we're going back. So um, so here, that, that's a green bottle. What I've, I've done it in a slightly different way this time. So rather than multiplying, what I've done is I've put the endings in a, well, in a tuple in this case, but you could, you could use a list. And I've used true or false as the index. So when n is 1, then that is... When that's true, that's the same as 1, so it would give you the, the item 1 from the list, which is the second item. Otherwise, if that's false, that um, false is the same as 0, so it would give you item 0 uh, from the list. So um, there you go, that's the explanation of that. And actually there is, um, there's a separate video uh, in on um, my YouTube channel um, where I kind of go into this in a bit more detail, and I use it to change is and are as well so you can have a look at that if you're particularly interested in this use um, and then this is an interesting thing as well so it ties in with that idea you know you don't need to say it was was stop equal to false in that earlier example um, there are certain things as well as one and zero that behave the same way as um, true and false so for example empty strings behave as though they were false so in this example here if you enter no text your string is empty um, it'll behave as false, so you'll get the else. If there's something in the string, it'll behave as true, and you'll get the uh, you said and whatever you entered. So empty strings are false, non-empty strings are true. 
Um, the same is true of um, uh, these sorts of things. So you can say um, not hello. Well, hello is true, so not hello is false. So if you if you do this, so if you can say, if you say um, well, I suppose you might want to do this to begin with, just to show that it is true. So is that uh, false? Yes, it is. Um, and then you could say, um, so if you say not that, you get true. And if you say not hello, uh, you get false. If there's any JavaScript programmers in the house, um, you might be aware there's a thing with three um, equal signs. It doesn't work in Python. Um, but what that means is, so two would be, does it, does it have the same value? And three means, is it exactly the same thing? So in Python, if you did this with three, it would say, um, it, that would say false, because um, although it has the same value, it's not the same thing. Um, so, so you can do all sorts of interesting things. With um, and that's useful to check sometimes. You know, if you're checking, if people are entering values and you're checking for a blank value um, to to finish your program. So there's the OCR election one, for example. So if you're voting for candidate A, B, and C, or you put nothing in, if you uh, you know if it's time to end, then uh, you could just do while, and you could use the the value of the string uh, as your true and your false. So the same with the lists. Non-empty lists are truthy. And empty lists are false. So that list is empty uh, at the moment. So it will print false. Uh, but if I put something in that list, it will print true. And you can, obviously you can you can demonstrate this with your with your console um, on the whiteboard or wherever. And think about what would happen if you answer those questions. Uh, again, non-zero numbers. So um, a zero number. Well, we've already seen that zero and false are the same, but it doesn't have to be one uh, for true. It can be any non-zero number. So again, you can investigate that as well. So lots, lots of different aspects to truth and false. So we've got Boolean variables that can be true or false. Some expressions that can be true or false. So comparisons greater than, less than, equal to, not equal to. And some other things behave as if they were true and false. So one and zero, in fact, zero and non-zero numbers, empty strings or strings with content, and same with uh, lists. So as I said here, works um, in uh, some languages. So um, I've used these techniques in JavaScript, PHP, and C, but apparently Rust and Lua behave differently if you use those.